Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The South African Institute of Civil Engineering has held its 25th yearly school bridge building competition, which sees pupils from across Southern Africa competing and aims to get children to apply engineering principles to make sturdy wooden bridges. Skulk Berger tells us more. SISI's bridge building competition saw 600 schools in Southern Africa competing, with 10 schools competing in the final in August in Pretoria. Pupils design bridges and practice building them under tutelage of their teachers or volunteer engineers. However, the judges always put in place additional requirements that the pupils have to meet on the day of the final. This year, the height of the bridges was restricted to 150 millimeters, forcing some school teams to adapt or abandon their prepared designs. The bridges had to span a clear length of 740 millimeters. Durban University of Technology Peter Maritzburg, engineering lecturer and SICE bridge building competition supervisor Oliver Rowe, gave the students an introductory lecture on the morning of the final. After explaining some of the engineering principles and typical points of failure and how to avoid them, Rowe gave the students the dimensions of the bridges they had to build by pretending to be an engineering client giving them a tender briefing. Once built, the bridges are tested to destruction on a specially designed rig to determine the maximum weight each can carry though aesthetics and mass are additional factors judges look at when carry weights are close. The bridge of the first place team from Brockenfell High School weighed 220 grams and carried 209 kilograms. The bridge of the second place team from St. John's College in Zimbabwe weighed 210 grams and carried 179 kilograms before breaking. The bridge of the third place team HDS Kimberley weighed 225 grams and carried 189 kilograms before breaking. Oliver Rowe explains some of the principles behind the bridge building competition. They allowed 25 uh, sticks of dimension 600 by 4 by 4 um, and it has normally been SA Pine. Uh, this year we, we've been blessed with Maranti which I think is going to be quite a, a dynamic change and I think we're going to get some very interesting loads coming through. Uh, so yeah, so they, they get the, the 25 sticks uh, plus a set of glue which has been sponsored by Rykem, super glue type thing, so it's a very quick drying due to the limited time frame that they have to construct these bridges. Uh, what we've expected in the past with regards to, to loading, uh, we've had some incredible uh, once in a lifetime bridge weights coming at about 267 kgs on a bridge that weighs less than 200 grams. That's not the norm. Yeah. Uh, normally we, we're looking at about, certainly in the past, obviously it's very much dependent on the length of the bridge, the span of the bridge, but we've, we've ranged from, from 100 kgs up to probably bordering on 200. Uh, but then you also get the extreme case where it breaks at 3 kgs due to poor design, poor construction, that kind of stuff. So it's, so it's, it's definitely a, a master, master bridge builders at work here, creating those 250 kg bridges. A lot of the principles are difficult to illustrate. Uh, obviously with the whole purpose is based around compression and tension forces within the members as it distributes the load into the members and then from the members into the support. But in order to really show that you need to do computer simulated design and that type of stuff, which these guys can't do, so a lot of theirs is, is hit and miss. Um, we, we normally tell them that the, 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 your upper members going across the top and, and down onto the supports are, are predominantly in compression and there you need to, to strengthen it. Uh, but it's very difficult to, to kind of help them with the principles um, without the, the computer-aided design coming in. We're dealing with, you know, fifth or sixth generation school bridge builders as, as past students have come back to assist the, the future students in this. So, so there's been a lot of design and, and experiences that have gone into to creating these bridges. So attitudes are range from incredible excitement to why have you chosen to limit the height? Um, because we're not used to that kind of thing. So, so it's been very interesting to see the dynamics, but generally speaking, the, the enthusiasm is high. Uh, they really enjoy this. I think for a lot of them, they, they see this as moving into their future career path, uh, as a kind of a stepping stone into it. There, there's a, a, almost a silence, which normally tells me that they're hard at work. You know, there, there's no, buzz and chatter, these guys are dedicated and uh, committed and have brought things that are designed by them to, to produce an end product that, that is remarkable. Other news making headlines this week, Rolf's Braggen acquisition leads to major profit increase and commercial bamboo production may have biofuel potential. JC listed chemicals manufacturer Rolf's group's acquisition of Braggen chemicals 
helped the company achieve a 91% increase in headline earnings from 41 million rand to 79 million rand. The year ended June 30. Key business performance drivers, obviously we did uh, a lot of restructuring in our industrial division. Uh, we closed the lead chrome plant. Um, we've extended the product range in industrials. We've ensured that we optimally structured in, in terms of using um, current overhead structures with combining logistics capabilities um, and also moving the water division to the jet park site has contributed from a rented premises, has contributed to, to performance and, and will do so going forward. Um, and then in Agri, despite the drought um, that was experienced during last year, performance um, has been excellent in that division as well. Growing bamboo commercially could create biofuel possibilities for commercial power generation and serve to sequestrate a percentage of the carbon emitted by the same power generation facilities. I think that there is a lot of unexplored potential for bamboo as, as a biomass, uh, particularly for a fuel. Um, one of the, the things that we uh, have to consider is, is that if it is to become that kind of biomass, it'll have to be planted in, in great sort of quantities and, and there's a lead time in order for that to happen. So it takes about seven years for bamboo to come into production at full maturity. But the advantage of that is, is that once in, in production, you harvest within the stand only 30% of the stand. So you're leaving 60% of the stand to continue growing and the next year you harvest another 30. That means that your carbon sequestration is continually happening in the plantation with 60% of the biomass remaining. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.